in many ways, Ray was our Richard Burton. He was Welsh, he was very good looking, and he had a wonderful voice. On top of that, he did have a wonderful stage presence and a wonderful sense of timing. He was a thorough professional. I've never known him not know all his lines on opening night. And uh, he, he's, he was always calm. He was a professional through and through. So he was in so many of your plays and in pivotal roles as well. Well, I'm wondering, did you write parts with him in mind or did it just work out that way? Well, later in life, I'll come to that. But yes, I was hugely lucky that in my first five plays, Ray was the lead or leading part in four of them. Now, when I wrote Glide Time, there was a character called Hugh who came from Wales. And strangely enough, I didn't have Ray in mind. But looking back, he was so obvious. And then he was in Middle Age Spread and then State of the Play in the lead. Um, but in later in life, uh, plays like um, Who Wants to Be a Hundred and Last Legs, as I was writing the parts, I thought, oh, this is just right for Ray. And it's a great help when you're writing to have somebody in mind uh, for that character. And it's happened. He, he was in both those plays. He had, well, he played a number of diverse roles because I was just looking back at some of the things. I mean, he was in Shortland Street. I'd forgotten that. And and obviously in um, various Peter Jackson movies and that yes. Moro ad. That, yes, um... well, Paul, <laughs> he wasn't allowed to forget that, Ray. <laughs> Somebody said as a scientist, I think it was Guy Ringer said to him, as a scientist, you shouldn't be doing this. However, he became uh, known as the Moro Man for quite a long time. Yeah, why why such a diverse um, uh, portfolio? Do you think? Uh, well, it's it's uh, easy to forget that he is a qualified scientist um, in terms of the. the um, so that was he had a very good background in, for teaching and things like that. In terms of his um, different roles, I mean, he he played uh, Einstein and Stalin and Churchill, and was convincing as all of them, which is a great tribute. I mean, I saw all those performances, and um, he, he was ter- just terrific. Did you know much of his early career? You mentioned the science there, and he was obviously a, a chemistry graduate, and I think he came to New Zealand for, for a job teaching in science. Did you know much about uh, that part of his life? I got to know him when I was a student of Victoria University, and he was then... Um, going out with Caroline, who became his wife. And it was the student parties I got to know him, but he wasn't a student then. And I didn't know him much as an actor. He was um, he was also stunning in A uh, Long Day's Journey Into Night, which is before Circa got established. And that's something else we have to thank him for. He was one of the co-founders of Circa Theatre back in 1976, which was set up to sort of counter Downstage's monopoly, and uh, in the end, in a sense, the tail began to wag the dog because Circa became more successful and has lasted to this very day. So what do you think his legacy is? Well, he will be remembered mostly as a very fine actor, um, of course, for his film and television performances, but mostly the ones on stage. I and mean, that's when he was just held the audience, was always clear credible, believable, and he was, as I say, the consummate professional. So his death, I imagine, is a significant loss, apart from his friends and family, but to to the industry as well. It's almost the end of an era, that that, uh, mid-1970s Wellington era. I was very amused to see that one headline said, uh, Father of Di Henwood dies. And I think he'd be very proud of that. He was very, very proud of Dyer's success. And so he should be, of course. But um, I thought that was quite funny that Dyer has sort of overtaken the father in, in this particular headline. But we certainly must never forget Ray.